Mercy, and I would like to share with you my recent project. It is a sound installation, Algae Chorus. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Yan Shao. I am a new media artist living in New York. I just got my master's degree at Interactive Telecommunications Program, ITP, from New York University. I would like to share with you my recent project, an interactive sound installation, LG Chorus. My interest in bacteria could date back to my trip to the Yellowstone National Park at Wyoming in the United States. The stunning rainbow colors are created by different types of archaea, the ancient bacteria. From this geologic wonder, I started research on where these bacteria live and what are their contributions to the Earth. I was inspired from Lynn Margaret's book Microcosmos and James Lovelock, who proposed Gaia theory. As a person having trained geology, I was fascinated by the great, great oxidation event that happened around 2.4 billion years ago that transformed the life and environment on the Earth. The primary agent of this planetary shift was a photosynthetic creature known as cyanobacteria. They have a blue-green color and they are thermophilous who can survive in the hot springs in the Yellowstone National Park. During the Great Oxidation event, the reproduction of cyanobacteria increased significantly, producing huge amounts of oxygen that gradually altered the, the atmosphere, and consequently leading to the demise of numerous anaerobic species. And this change marked a turning point the age of bacteria transformed the earth into a fertile land, become a possible surface for life to evolve. It is notable that cyanobacteria named blue-green algae. Algae is a broad term that describes a group of photosynthetic organisms that possess photosynthetic pigments such, such as chlorophyll. Algae can range from unicellular forms such as chlorella to multicellular form like giant cap and the unique one cyanobacteria. Algae play a vital role in terrestrial environment, especially in bodies of water, balancing the oxygen level of the planet. But sometimes they could present conspicuous like the clip I took from a stream in the Prospect Park in Brooklyn last summer. The water surface are mainly covered by algae. Algae bloom are often seen in many lakes and oceans globally due to excess nutrition and usually treated as an environmental hazard. Though algae bloom can be toxic and lead to a depletion of oxygen in the water, they are somewhat the consequences of human activities. It's their approach to grow to reproduce and restore the environment. I made a computational simulation about its vigorous blooming process, from barely seed to flourishing autopoiesis, then to its self-limitation. The whole video lasts 5 minutes, and here's a short clip.
The tongue track consists consists of individual faint sound pieces, simulating the sound when cyanobacteria's oxygen-containing bubble flow to the surface. This abstract representation makes it possible to interact with this invisible and rarely heard action, thus calling into question of humanity's essential reliance on oxygen. In the face of climate change, it is inevitable to think about where the extra carbon dioxide can go, and algae are come to the front, absorbing most of carbon dioxide and turning into around 70% oxygen on the Earth. At every moment, at every inhalation and exhalation, we benefit from their evolution. After the work autopoiesis, I want to make a more engaging piece that invites people to know and learn from algae. As we humans can't make oxygen for ourselves, we're actually depend dependent of algae, grass, trees, and all photosynthetic species. We're not solitary beings, but part of the network entangled with all life forms. All of this brings me to algae chorus. It is a sound installation that collaborates with living algae in real time, transforming their movement and photosynthetic process into sounds. The algae utilize the collective carbon exhalations within the exhibition space, revealing the mutual dependencies between humans and photosynthetic organisms. And here's the short video. In this project, I use three species of algae, including single-cell cyanobacteria, also named Smulina, microalgae nanochloropis, and the most common freshwater species, Chlorella vulgaris. I collected these domestic containers of flower vases from a second-hand shop to reduce the cost of this project, and the algae live in various growth stages, appearing different colors. As you see in the picture, they look pretty magic in the evening. This installation explores the visual perception of the varied green shades of each algae colony in different degrees of density. It poses question of how richness the green we can perceive, how many green shades we can name, how we relate that to other species with these familiar and strange green hues and tints. Technically, the whole system is running on a Raspberry Pi 4. In front of this installation, an IR distance sensor detects the audience presence and starts the sound performance. 24 light sensors are placed at the backside of containers to see algae colony movement. At the same time, they also detect human interactions. Three I2C Multiplexer are used for address control of light sensors, and 24 LEDs are placed underneath for sensor trigger indication. An NDIR CO2 sensor is used to detect the collective CO2 level. All sensors connect to the Raspberry Pi 4, where data are processed through Python and passed to processing. 
The algae's growth and movements are manifested by light sensor in their biological time, while audiences inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide. The atmosphere in the exhibition is slowly affected and gets detected. All these data are translated into sound synthesis and tune the chorus. Through a rich visual and listening experience with algae, algae chorus provides a space for contemplating oxygen and carbon dioxide circulation and raises questions about our habit of anthropocentrism and the hierarchy of biological taxonomy. This project is part of the exhibition This Is Not a Trail, themed on technology, equity, and the climate at New York University, sponsored by Teach Initiative for Creative Research. For more information about my work, please visit my website or connect with me on Instagram. Thank you.